Hi everyone, my name is Forrest Urban and I'm the manager of Live Invertebrates here at the Natural History Museum and it's time for another Lunchtime with Live Animals. And today I have the mantids for you. I'm here with Crystal, my Live Invertebrate uh, specialist. She's going to help us out today. So today we're going to learn about three different mantids that we have at the museum. We have the dead leaf mantid named Yo, which is Japanese for leaf because it looks just like a dead leaf. We have the Chinese mantid named Mo here. And we have Greeny, the California mantid here. She's still just teeny tiny. So let's get into it and let's learn all about their amazing survival adaptations. First of all, did you know that mantids are related to roaches? I bet you didn't know that. But mantids evolved from roaches. Roaches evolved first on the planet and then through the millennia, some roaches diverged off into mantids. And you can kind of see that when you look at a roach anatomy. I have one here. This is called a Madagascar hissing cockroach. You can hear him hissing. Uh, let's see, this one's a little bit too fast for me. Crystal can give me a little bit of assistance. But this one, is slower. Can you see its triangular head? Mantids also have a very triangular head. This is the head here, those are the antenna. And let's look up close at a mantid face. Can you see the triangular head? It's pretty obvious, right? And so mantids have obviously these two huge eyes that makes them very distinct. They have excellent vision but they also have these smaller eyes here called simple eyes, which all insects have for detecting when they're in the shade and when they're not in the shade. If you saw our tarantula video last week, the week before, I'm sorry, then you also saw those simple eyes where they really can't detect anything at all. But mantids with these huge compound eyes can see very well. So they have 360 vision. They can see up, back, forward, and straight ahead all at the same time. It's really hard to sneak up on a mantid. It's also hard to sneak up on a mantid because unlike all other insects, they have a neck so they can actually turn their head and look at something. And that helps them be extra stealthy, extra creepy. They don't have to run down and chase something to eat it. They'll stay in place, usually staying camouflaged, and then just turn their head and look at their prey and then reach out those really long, strong forearms and grab it and bring it back. Their, their forearms are called raptoral forearms. It helps them be like a raptor. And so they also have these really sharp thorns on their forearms as well. It makes them really grip whatever they're gonna catch extra well. Um, you may not know this, but mantids also have a single ear right here where their throat would be. So this is their ear, so they can also detect sound, which helps them escape predation from, say, birds, especially bats. They'll hear them coming, and then as their defense, they'll just drop down, hunker down, and try not to get eaten or seen. So they have especially well cryptus or camouflage. Can you see the dead leaf mantis here? Yo, up against these dead leaves, they look so similar. This is Yo that lives in our new exhibit called Bugtopia, which you can come and see soon when we open. Uh, and this is another form of crypsis or camouflage that the Chinese mantis does. Let's see if we can carefully look at Mo. And her form of crypsis is blending into leaves because she's green. Mantids also have fully formed wings so they can fly a little bit not a lot it's usually just a short glide um, and they also do a lot of hopping but mostly they are uh, ambush predators so they sit and wait for something to come and then like I said reach out those those super strong forearms and grab it and hold it very, very tight, and then use their mouth parts, which are like food processors to slice and dice whatever they're gonna eat. 
And you can't really see their mouth parts. They're tucked in to the head here. But this whole mouthpiece here is just filled with slicers and dicers and choppers. Um, they don't bite or sting like, say, a bee or uh, a tarantula. They don't have venom. So it all, it's all in the strength of those forearms and the slicing and dicing built-in machine that they have. So it is lunchtime with live animals. Let's see if Yo is hungry today. So we're gonna feed her another invertebrate. This is a mealworm. And I'm gonna see if she'll turn her head for us and maybe reach out her front legs. She just put out an oatheca that's called an egg sack. And so sometimes that will make them extremely hungry because it takes a lot of energy to put out an egg sack. And sometimes she's tired and she's not feeling like eating. This is her oatheca here. So inside of this, which is also camouflaged, are about 100 to 200 cells. Each little cell holds a tiny egg, a tiny mantis egg. And each egg will produce a new mantis. And we have a whole bunch of dead leaf mantids here, and we have a whole bunch of baby dead leaf mantids. So this is just about, oh, five or so of the hundreds that we have here at the museum that we're rearing out for programs like this, for special behind the scenes, and for Bugtopia. Let's see, who else do we have? So this is another dead leaf mantis here. We call her deadly, and she might be hungry today. She's a pretty good eater. She hasn't put out an egg sac, AKA Oatheca. So let's see if she wants to have lunch with us. Do you see her right here? Put my hand behind her and you can see her better. She's looking at me, she just turned her neck. interested she's got it was she did you see her reach her front reptorial legs out pull it really tight now she's using her mouth parts to bite into the exoskeleton of the mealworm amazing she's so camouflaged it's incredible you see how the structure of her this is her thorax looks exactly like a dead leaf and so does her abdomen. So they try to look like dead leaves, not really um, alive leaves because they also don't want to be eaten by things that eat leaves like herbivores, like walking sticks and other things that, that eat leaves. Let's look more at some of their amazing adaptations. Another form of their defense besides hunkering down uh, hiding and camouflaging is this defense mechanism where they literally throw their hands up and try to look like a larger animal. They also have what are called predator resemblance eye spots. So tucked inside their wings are these eye spots here where they try to look like a larger animal that would have larger eyes in order to scare away and intimidate whatever is bothering them. Here's another one. This one is from our collection here that will eventually go into Bugtopia on the camouflage wall. And other forms of mantids, which we don't have currently, but we will have in Bugtopia, and that you also can come and see in our event called uh, Bug Fair, are orchid mantids. Look at those super pink eyes in order to camouflage into an orchid. And the resemblance, the camouflage is really incredible. Can you detect the orchid mantis sitting in right in the middle of, of the orchid in order to right ambush any sort of pollinator that's gonna come in and try to pollinate that orchid. There's another one. And then some orchids aren't pink, right? A lot of them are white. So they can also change their color 
to be white. Right? And then when they move off of the orchid, they're not camouflaged anymore, so you, they can easily be detected, as you can detect the one that's moved off the orchid onto the leaf. Thank you, Crystal. Um, each species of mantis will produce its own type of oatheca. So this is a different type of oatheca that we saw. Instead of being suspended, this one forms this leathery patch right here. And it starts out as a soft foam, kind of like spittle, if you will, and then hardens into this structure here in order to camouflage out. It'll take about, oh, depending upon the species, about a month, depending on the species and the time of year, anywhere from a month to a year for these to emerge out from here. They all emerge at the same time. And then they, they form as a teeny tiny mantisling, like this little guy right here, very small. And then to grow, they will have to molt and shed that exoskeleton and then slide their way out of the exoskeleton. That exoskeleton hardens. Then they continue to grow, eat and grow. And they'll do that about six times until they become a full grown adult. And then they won't shed anymore. Um, female mantids are much bigger than the males, live longer than the males. And it's also very common in uh, mantis, for mantis, female mantis to eat the head off of the male mantis while they're mating uh, and use the male mantis as a food source. It's, it's common, it's an evolved trait. Uh, and that's all that I have for you today. I'm so glad that I was able to have lunch with you, as is Crystal. And we look forward to any questions that you may have, we'll answer those uh, in the messages. And be sure to join us next time when we go over morphos and atlas moths. So we're gonna look at butterflies and moths next week. Also be sure to check out our Instagram page. Um, you can see the link attached for more information on live animals. Thank you so much, bye.